Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to take a look at how you can use vMix scripting to create a keypad entry that you can use to select player numbers from their jersey to use them for graphics. So before we get there, as always, I welcome you to you know, join us in the comments. Uh, also, if you'd like to join us live here on air, uh, we'd have somebody from the studio get you on, but you can be here in the studio with us and we can have a conversation. So please, if you'd like, we definitely would welcome that. Okay, let's get started. So for this show, I actually had somebody that uh, has been part of our Streaming Alchemy community here that I met out at NAB this past year. And he said what he was looking for was a simple way to simply enter a jersey number and be able to call up that player, whether it's statistics, graphics, whatever. But the ability to basically do this without having to lay out every player on each team that's going to be in a game on sort of separate buttons, which is the way they were doing it. So I thought a bit about it, and I came up with what I think could be a fairly flexible way to do this, but also something that has a lot of other use cases. Anytime you need to enter a specific number into vMix to create some sort of uh, action, you have the ability now to do that. So let's first take a look at how I set this up and how this would work. So this is what we have set up in vMix. And I also have a stream deck that we configured over here that has all the buttons we want. And so if you look over, and I'm gonna sort of point in the vMix on the right hand side, you'll see there's this blank jersey that's sitting there. So what I have the ability to do now is if I wanted to type in a player number, I can just do that over here. And you'll see that that number is typing in on the blank jersey on the right hand side. And then I can select the team that I want, team A or team B. And when I do that, it actually goes out and gets the information and populates that on this blank jersey. But the other thing that it's doing, it's also populating it on a graphic. So now anytime I want to change the details on that graphics, let me pick another player. So I type in 58 and we'll go for team B. You can now see that it called up a separate graphic for team B. And this gives you a pretty flexible interface for this now, where I have my button presses for the numbers. I have the team that I want to select in this button press. And then I can also highlight a particular graphic if I wanted to call up a graphic that I had preset for that. So we're gonna go through how we did all of that in the show. So let's talk a little bit about how we worked with the digits first, because that's, it isn't necessarily intuitive, but it's once you understand it, it's a pretty straightforward way to do this. So what we've done is we've created small scripts for each one of these digits that uses a dynamic variable and it simply appends the digit to this dynamic variable. And so when I press the number one, it's basically taking di dynamic value three and adding a one to that. And then when I go and type in, you know, four, it'll go and append a four to that one. But once I have two digits, it's also gonna check to be sure that I can't add any more because all the jerseys will have either one or two digits. So that's basically structurally what we were doing over with the keypad. Selecting the team is very similar. We take that number out of the dynamic value, dynamic value three, and we will use that to work with, uh, to basically look up the details for that player on that particular team. And it recognizes also if it can't find it. So for instance, if I go here and I'll just type in something that I know isn't an actual player number. If I hit that, it'll come back and tell me on the back of the jersey that that player is not found for that team. But I mean, the other thing it will do is say I end up typing in, let me clear that out. If I type in 33 and I select that for team B, 
it'll come back and say not found. But there is a number 33 on team A. So if I just go and press team A now, it finds that. So it, it is somewhat forgiving if you do the wrong thing. But all we're doing is we're taking that dynamic value and we're leveraging that in another script to do what we need to do. So the other piece to all this is that the data that's driving this is all in XML. So let's take a look at that first. So we call this the team roster data. And I have that over here. So basically, this is an XML file we have set up that has a team A at, as, as one group, and then all the players that we have in team A with their details. And then we also come down, we have team B and all their players and details. So the player information, first name, last name, position, general stuff. We also have an image that we have for that player. And we have some general stats. This was done fairly quickly. This could be a very, very detailed XML file and even dynamic where you could be using in-game stats as these things are happening. So a lot of ways to work with the XML. But the big advantage to using XML here is that you don't have as much pre-production work when you work with sports teams. So if you imagine doing this on a sort of sort of a large uh, X keys or something, which would be the normal way most people would do that, you would have to go and figure out each one of those buttons individually for each one of the players and then label it and do all of that. When you're using XML and just typing in numbers, you now have the ability to basically change this file out game by game, and you will get everything you need you know, with the same interface here. So you don't have a lot of that extra work, just making sure you have all the team data available. So before we get into the scripts themselves, let me go see who we have. So we have America Newscape has joined us, and he's saying that Stream Deck and VMix are a powerful combination. I mean, absolutely. I think some of the key things you have with uh, the Stream Deck is that it's so easy to configure things and to change things on them. And so like setting up this display was, was pretty straightforward, just generating a bunch of images and then tying those into scripting with vMix. Definitely uh, a great combination there. Okay, so let's get back into the scripting piece here. And I'm gonna switch over here. And now we're in the script here. So what I've done to create the uh, numeric pad is I've created 10 scripts, very small scripts that basically when I press button one is a script for button one and up to you know nine and into zero. So that gives you the, the full range of two digits. So if I come here, uh, so this is just, for handling digit press one. Uh, so we set that up as our digit press string, but it's pretty simple. We go into vMix, load everything we need. We then select dynamic value three. And if you remember, I mentioned that dynamic value three is where we're storing this player number as we're working through the system. So I put it in here. So this will come in and initially it will be blank. So what I will do when I hit number one for the first time is we'll check and say, okay, I have this, I have this value. Is the length of this string less than two? So it's basically looking saying, is it, do I have either one digit there or no digits there? Because if there's two digits, we can't add anymore. But all we're doing is if there are less than two digits, we take the digit we just pressed and append that to the player number. So if I had typed a five last time, and then when I'm in here typing one, it's going to take the five from the dynamic value, append the one to it, giving me a 51, a string with 51 in it. And then all I'm doing is um, saving that back as the current dynamic value for the player number. And what I'll also do is I will type out that number on the back of that blank jersey that we had. So you get immediate feedback on what you're seeing there uh, when you're typing. So that type of back and forth, we think, is really important, especially in uh, a game situation where 
things are happening quickly and you need to respond to that. Okay, so we have a few more comments here that I'd like to, to jump into before we get to the last major script, which is how we respond when you press the team button with all of this. So we have JP uh, joined us again. JP, great to see you here. Uh, so he's saying, how would you link this to outside online XML feed? Uh, that's, that's an excellent question because basically we're, we're opening this as a file, but this is something you could definitely read out of a URL based stream. Uh, it would do it, you would do it to, in a lot of different ways because you'd have to do this now as a sort of a HTTP read. So this, if I were doing that, what I would probably do is I would probably implement this differently. I'd probably implement this using Node.js, uh, but that's something that, you know, we could follow up. That may be a good follow-up show to this, but it, it's simply reading that data using HTTP get requests as opposed to reading it open as a file. But both are, both ways are possible. And so we also have uh, Sergio Barat. Hopefully I've said your name correctly, Sergio. Uh, so he's saying that documentation of vMix scripts is very poor. Well, inside of vMix, vMix's own documentation directly, uh, it is, I'll say, undercovered. But there are some excellent things in the vMix forums. Uh, they basically called scripting for dummies, which is a great way to sort of ramp up uh, on your scripting knowledge. So that will give you a lot of detail there. The other thing though, is that vMix scripting is essentially Visual Basic uh, VB.net script. So you can find out a lot from that side too. So even though the language itself may not be documented at all in the vMix space, uh, there's plenty of sources that, that cover Visual Basic uh, and VB.net. So you should be able to look up most things, but keep in mind that VB.net is an earlier version. It's not the latest version. So some of the newer features added to .NET may not work. So just something to, to keep in mind on that. Uh, so JP is going back and saying, it would be great to pick up stats from multiple sources to overlay on a primary show. So yeah, so that, you know, there, like I said, there are, there are multiple ways to do that. Uh, the reason I would recommend using uh, Node.js for that is that you could do that in JSON and probably there'd be more things in JSON out there in terms of sports statistics than you would have in XML but it's also very easy in Node to convert an, uh, an XML format into JSON and to use it that way. So probably that would be the most flexible way, but yeah, the, the fact we're using this from one file is just you know, for demo purposes here to, to sort of do this as an explanation, but uh, definitely different ways to do this. Okay, so let's get over to the last script we really want to cover here. And this is basically when I press one of those team buttons, if you remember we had a team A and team B, a red shirt, blue shirt. Uh, so when I press one of those buttons, what do I do with that? So let's sort of pull down and dig in a little bit. So up front, we want to set up all the variables we need for the player data. So this is everything from the names and, and stats that we have. Uh, we're also, setting up what we're going to use for the main title overlay. And then we get into sort of the vMix XML things we have to do here. So the first thing is we have to load up vMix and we're going to now load in three values. So there's a couple of new values here that I haven't talked about yet. So the way we have this set up is we're using all three, the, the first three dynamic uh, values inside of vMix. The value one is for the current value, the current player number that has been set for team A. Value two is the current player number that's been set for team B. And value three is this dynamic value. As we are working through and typing in a number, that's where that value goes as until we've decided to assign it to a team. So those are the three dynamic values that we're reading out of vMix. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically say if the dynamic, uh, the player number, which is the, the one that we have sort of in process, if that number is blank, then we're going to actually assign player number to the current value in value one, which is the existing value for team A, the existing player number we've selected for team A. And we're doing that simply so once you're in here, you're going to be displaying something. So when I press this button, what it's going to say is if I haven't entered a new value here for uh, you know a player, use the one that we've already assigned to team A, the last one we've picked for team A. And that, that's really useful because this would let you go back to a graphic or to go back and select the images for team A and pull those up without having to retype the last number. So you can go back and forth around a given player that way. So it's fairly straightforward. The other thing is, uh, what we're gonna do is we will blank out, if that player number uh, is blank, we're gonna blank out the value on the back of that blank jersey that we had, which is our entry. So this just makes sure that we clear that out since there's no number there. So there's something else now. Your indicator says I have no value set, but in the, like a new, no new value set, for entering a new player, but your graphics will now show the correct information for player one, for team A. Uh, so we go and we open the file now. So this is reading all the XML. We set up the stuff we needed from vMix, loaded those values in. Now we're gonna load in the team roster. And like I mentioned with JP, he was asking about doing this HTML. Right now we're just doing it as a file. So when we do that, we create an XML document and load that in as a file stream. So we open the file and pull it in, and we're just pulling this out as, as data. But we are getting uh, you know, all the information now we, we have for both rosters. So we just we have both in the one file. And so we're just pulling that out. Uh, we then will go in and we're gonna sort of load everybody that's on team A into this. And that's pretty simple. We create a node list and we then open the team A roster file stream. Uh, and close this. And now we have that whole thing as a node list. And what we're going is we're going to take and we have that thing set up as, as XML. Then we're going to go create a, a node list, which basically says, give me the entire roster for team A. So we're reading that big file with everybody involved. And we're just pulling the roster for team A into this. And now we have all the players in a node list. And so what we want to do is if we have entered a number for one of the players, we want to come back and say, let's look for that player in the node list. And that is pretty simple. Uh, you know, we're making sure we found a node list for team A. That was what that piece of code is. But in here now, we're going and saying, let's find the player node, the node for the player we selected by going in there and entering their number. So we're looking for roster team A and a player with this number as their player number. Uh, and that was just all data that's in the XML. And we have two things. Either we entered a number that isn't on team A, in which case we'll just post a, a console message that says this, this person isn't in the roster, but we'll also on the back of the jersey post uh, that it's not found. But we won't change anything. So when, until we know that's a good number, we're not going to assign it to sort of value one, which is where we store the currently active team A player number we're keeping. So we're not doing anything with that. So we just exit this. So we get out of this routine now. And that's what that exit sub does for us. Uh, otherwise, if we did find the player, then we're going and we're pulling all that data uh, about that player. So we went through that in the XML, their names, positions, their image, URI, and everything else. And so we pull that out. And then what we do is we go and we populate the title templates that we have for this. So we've done a lot of things with title templates. So for anything we update that's text, we're going and we're saying, what input are, is this on? And then we're going and saying, what's the item, the text item? And every item in a GT title has a name. So you give that item a name. And so we're using that in text items end with dot text, but image items end with dot source. So these are just two different types of things. But all we're doing is we're pulling all that data out of the XML file and we're populating the templates that we need with all of this information here. Uh, and when that's done, uh, based on this, since this is team A, 
<coughs> oh, excuse me. Since this is Team A, we're going to turn the Team A jersey color on for a part of what we do with the image. And we're going to turn, which is a red jersey, and we're going to turn the Team uh, B, which is a blue jersey, we're going to turn that off. So that lets us switch in the title, which jersey we show. And uh, actually, if I just switch over to the vMix screen for a second, uh, you will see over here that is the, the jersey that we swap. So if I were to go and pick somebody, let's pick number 58 from the blue team, you'll now see that jersey switched over and becomes blue. And all we're doing is we have the two jerseys laid over each other in the GT title, and we're making one visible and the other hidden. So that lets us swap between that. So that's just one other thing that we really haven't done much of, but you can hide and show uh, assets inside a GT title designer this way. But with that all done, we now go and we say, okay, let's set, this is a good player. We've changed the graphic. So let's set dynamic value one to that player number. So that's the new player number we've assigned for team A. And we will clear out dynamic value three because now we're at like, okay, we've assigned this player. So let's clear this out and let you go and start fresh with entering a new number when you need to enter a new player. So that's it. <laughs> so what we, we sort of fake the keypad, use dynamic values and XML to then populate title templates with this. But you can see the difference in terms of workflow. It, in three button pushes, I can have any graphic set. Uh, and I'm not trying to search for it on a big screen where I'm like, okay, I have, you know, 25 players or whatever that I could potentially have. So, you know, that could be 50 players in total, 25 team A, 25 team B. So that could be a lot in a live situation to search through to make sure you press the right one. So this is just, I can look on the field and see, you know, a jersey number and type it in. I don't even have to know anything about the player uh, in particular and just pull that up. But this could be used also for other things like statistics. Maybe you don't want graphics, but you want to be able to simply sit there and go, I want to be able as an announcer or a play-by-play -play to type in a number so I could get all interesting statistics about that player and just talk about that on air. So something pretty simple to do that way as well. So let's see. Uh, who, we have some more comments here. So we have Nathan Bennett. Uh, is giving us a good day, y'all. So Nathan, thank you for joining us. This is great. Uh, and we also have uh, Guy has joined us. So Guy, thank you very much. Uh, if you folks don't know Guy, he is one of the true pioneers and gurus in vMix scripting. So uh, I think all of us that do anything with scripting owe him a, you know, a nod of thanks for what he's contributed. So Guy, glad you could make it. So. So that's really everything we, we wanted to cover on today's show. Uh, I know, you know, for folks in America, this is uh, the 4th of July weekend. So I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So we'll jump into the post show. And, you know, if there aren't any real questions, we'll wrap that up quickly. Uh, but, you know, if you can't make us for that, thank you very much for joining us for today's show. And we will see you next week. Otherwise, we'll see you in a few. Take care. All right, welcome back to the post-show hangout here. So this was, this was an interesting uh, show to do when we were putting together the scripting for this. Because the scripting itself is actually fairly straightforward compared to some of the other things we've done. But the power in creating a key entry, having something where you can just enter digits, there are so many different use cases for this. Uh, this could be, you know, used in a very general sense anytime you need to select somebody from a numbered list out, whether it's, you know, presenters, whether it's sports figures. Uh, it could also be used sort of index graphics. So you could turn around and say, I have just a range of graphics, a range of, uh, say, say you have uh, advertisers that are coming in, they have little spots. You could type this in to make sure you load the right uh, video in and then play that out 
uh, as an interstitial or, or something you're using uh, to promote or to sponsor a production doing. So lots of different use cases for this. It isn't a uh, simply a, a sports thing, but in the sports space where this is constantly, you know, a dynamic where you're always talking about individual players, uh, we think it has a lot of strong application. Uh, the other piece in this, though, is that we wanted to, to just assure everybody that we're still, you know, going to cover vMix scripting only, and we're not just fully moving to Node.js, but there are a lot of things in the Node.js side that would have made this easier. Uh, and so, you know, the things we talked about last week with functions and other stuff that you can do, that would have simplified a lot of this. And we could have done, you know, a lot more around, you know, how we reacted to uh, the keypad and what we did there to, to handle that. So some, some cool and interesting things here in general, but uh, hopefully everybody found it interesting. We certainly enjoy doing this. And I really, I want to give a shout out uh, to Ken Benedict. He was the person that had suggested this as something he really needed. So hopefully this covers his specific use case and it would be something that uh, he could uh, apply. But hopefully it's something that all of you can apply in some way or fashion uh, in your future productions. So we don't have any other comments. So I guess we're gonna do a short show today with an early wrap up. If you're in the US, please enjoy the 4th of July holiday. Be safe, have fun with the family. Otherwise, just have a great summer weekend, everybody. Oh, oh, JP just threw in something. Last minute, I was wrapping up, so good, good timing, JP. So he's saying, we map out shortcuts using data sources linked to Google Sheet with that mapped into Title Designer, which we custom layout. So, so this is new to us. So yeah, it's, what you're basically doing is you're, you're, instead of using the shortcut directly, you're using the shortcut uh, as an indirect way to specify what you want. So uh, very similar technically, but it, uh, you know, both of these things can, uh, can work very well. So, you know, like I said, it, it's something uh, that's, that's pretty flexible uh, and maybe use complementary too. You may turn around and say, I want to have 10 players that I, I just want to jump to directly because they're the ones I know I'm going to be talking about, but the rest I just use a type in number. So definitely hybrid use cases for this as well. So uh, so we have uh, Guy came on and said, whatever works if it helps in your production. And that, that is probably some of the, the great truisms in, in all of this. Uh, there is no right or wrong way to do anything here. Whatever, whatever works and gets the job done in your production is, is definitely the way to do it. So, uh, uh, so Ken joined us all. Ken uh, coming in on Facebook. So Ken, Thank you for uh, suggesting this. It was great meeting you out at NAB this year. So hopefully this fits the bill for what you were looking to do. So, all right. So uh, JP sends his thanks uh, and, you know, wishes everyone a great weekend. And we do too as well. So thank you everybody for joining us here. And we'll see you all next week. Take care.